This is Johnny and Jose with Tiger Bomb MMA, and tonight we'll be going over UFC Fight Night Cater versus Chikadze. Very important fight at 145. This could be the number one contender and next up for Volkanovski, just due to Max Holloway pulling out of the fight days after it was announced. But we'll be going over the entire fight card, giving you our thoughts, predictions, possible parlays. If during the, the discussion we find it fit that there might be a couple parlays on here, we might go over those. But we'll begin the fight card with a very interesting bout at straw weight. And by interesting, I mean not good at all. Vanessa Demopopoulos, the little monster, versus uh, Silvana Gomez Juarez. It's grappler versus striker. Demopopoulos is not very good on the feet, but she's very aggressive and very tough. And Juarez Gomez, Gomez Juarez, she's a good striker, but she's up in age. And currently the odds are dead even, minus 110, minus 110. This one is tough for me to break down because, number one, it's women's MMA. It's more or less lower-level women's MMA. Uh, Vanessa Dimapopoulos was the former uh, LFC champion at strawweight, and she lost to Godinez for the belt in a pretty good fight. Uh, she got her ass beat pillar to post. You know, she did pretty well in the later round, but it showed her toughness, despite me not thinking she's the most well-rounded fighter in fighting, period. She's pretty good off of her ground uh, – off of her back, I should say. She's good on the ground. Uh, she's very, I hate to say this because I'm not 100% positive, but my initial reaction to her is that she's more of a uh, submission over position type of girl, but it really suits her because of her length and her flexibility. Uh, Gomez Juarez, on the other hand, primarily a striker. When she lets her hands go and she is, how can I put it, d being dominant on the feet it's very good for her, but if there's any real resistance, if she's getting pushed back, it doesn't really show off too well. She's very patient on the feet, which is a good and a bad thing. Like she picks her shots well, but she is waiting a lot is from what I've seen. And it really showed off in the fight with Godinez where she got finished by armbar. She didn't really look her best in that fight. In this particular fight, I do have to go with Dimapopoulos, although I'm not confident in it at all. Uh, Demopopoulos can get her ass beat on the feet if she can't get a takedown, but I do predict her getting a takedown eventually. And if Godinez can snatch an arm up, I think Demopopoulos can as well. She's obviously moving down back to 115 after her last fight against JJ Aldrich at 125, where I thought she could win, but she was completely bullied by the bigger girl. So I think her moving back down to her natural weight class, it'll really show what she can do. And I must say, I'm not a fan of Demopopoulos, but this is the second time I'm picking her to win, which disgusts me, but I'll go with Demopopoulos. I really think that she has that X factor of women's MMA bullshit, where despite her getting her ass beat completely, she can just fluke, submit some girls. And I think that's really what she's all about. She's really good at just getting those weird submissions. And she's been showing some decent knockout power as well. Uh, she's pretty wild. So who knows what will happen, but I'll go with Demopopoulos. I would say round number two submission. She catches Gomez Juarez and something funky like a inverted triangle off of her back. Yeah. Uh, well, first thing I have to say is I don't really have much to say about a lot of these fights this week. Uh, this, being, this one in particular, it's the opening fight, um, you know, I'd rather they uh, showcase, you know, uh, hardcore midget wrestling. Uh, instead of some of these fights, uh, especially some of these very extremely low-level women's fights. Um, here, though, uh, I have to say, being 37 years of age, uh, Gomez, Juarez, uh, she's not really doing herself any favors. I mean, she doesn't look it. Look, she doesn't look too beat up, at least in the picture that Topology has up. Uh, so she has that going for her. But, um, yeah, I think her... Um, her main, you know, her game being mainly stand up is going to work against her this time. I think she's, uh, I wouldn't, I think maybe dominate is too strong a word, uh, but she's going to get, uh, you know, just either taken down or controlled against the cage. Uh, and it's going to be, a, I think, a very lackluster fight. Uh, I'm going with Vanessa. Uh, to get at least two rounds, uh, you know, uh, Gomez Juarez might either come out strong in the first round or, you know, get a fire lit up, you know, under her in the third round, depending on what her coaches are like. 
you know, uh, you know, so it all depends either if she's a fast starter or a strong finisher. Uh, but at 37 years of age, I don't think, you know, her time either is running out or it's already run out. But we're going to see. Uh, I have uh, Vanessa uh, by very lackluster finish. I think I'll probably be, uh, be dusting during this fight or something. I'll find something to do. Next bout at Bantamweight, we've got Brian Boom Kelleher versus Saeed Yakub Kok Ramanov. Kok Rim. Cock your, cock your mom off. Cock your mom off. Uh, interesting bout between, I would say, an up-and-coming guy and a guy coming at the end of his career. Brian Kelleher, he's 35 years old. He's an extreme veteran. He's fought a lot of times, 23 and 12 compared to the 9 and 2 and cock your mom off. And currently the odds have it in favor of Saeed Yacoub, minus 160, come back on Brian Kelleher, plus 135. And right now... Kokromanov, he's coming off of a pretty impressive win on short notice against Trevin Jones. If I recall correctly, he took the, that fight in about four days' notice, and he ended up finishing the very deadly knockout artist that is Trevin Jones. Trevin Jones looked like shit in that fight. Horrible fucking fight. I mean, the fight IQ was awful. He gassed himself out trying to take down the judo expert in Kokromanov. And that's his primary weapon, really. Kakramanov is very good with the takedowns. One thing that I really considered in this fight is Brian Kelleher's guillotine. I don't think it's going to be a huge factor in this fight because Kakramanov is a taller guy by three inches. Actually, sorry, two inches. So I don't see him also going for a traditional takedown, like a double leg, single leg to expose his neck. He'll, he'll do some funky trips. And I actually see this one being quite competitive up until a certain point. I am worried that Brian Kelleher, he does possess power in those hands. And at 135, he's been a bit of a hit and miss. Same thing at, at featherweight. He's dropping back down to, to 135. And uh, the thing about Kelleher is that he's very good, but he's not great everywhere. Like he can beat a ton of guys. He can beat a ton of, a ton of guys without a ton of, of experience. And I think Kokromanov, despite being 9-2, and two, he has just the right amount of experience. He fought Umar Nurmagomedov. He didn't get finished. The thing that I didn't like about that fight with Nurmagomedov is that they, and by that I mean the Nurmagomedov corner, didn't consider his striking to be any, any threat. So they said, you know, it's a perfect time to, to try your striking. And Kokromanov's striking is wild. He has power. He's knocked dudes out with one punch. But uh, it, it's very wild, I'll say that. And I think Kelleher can catch him. But I do have to go with Saeed Yacoub, the younger guy. He's 26 years old. He's very hungry. Coming out of a good camp in Team Oyama. I, I like the way they coach this guy. I think he might be a star at the 135 division. For Brian Kelleher, though, he's not out of the woods. You might be able to take a shot on him by either finish or specifically submission. I think he might be able to get a submission on Kokromanov, but it's it's not incredibly likely. But it's Brian Kelleher. If anyone's going to snatch a neck, it's going to be Brian Kelleher. But I, I got Saeed Yacoub, Kok Romanov, a.k.a. Kok your mom off, to win by a decision. I don't think he'll finish Kelleher. Uh, I think it'll be a fun fight, but primarily dominated by Kok Romanov. I agree. Um, based on uh, Kelleher's last few fights, uh, it, he's set to take a loss here. Um, he's, I think, way past his prime. and. I think in you know his his um, his career is on a downward trajectory, despite you know him having a few wins in his last few fights uh, against. Uh, well, I'm not saying you know Saeed Yokub is necessarily you know a top contender at this time. He is you know his trajectory is is uh, you know on an upward slope. Um, so I think that alone uh, doesn't bode well for Brian. Uh, even though, you know, you shouldn't really count Brian out uh, completely. Um, but I think, yeah, the, uh, the age difference alone, I think, is going to be um, is going to be more than he, he can probably handle at this time. Though somebody, you know, closer to his age, you know, you know maybe has his cardio. And, uh, I think it would stand a better chance, but. Uh, even though he has a ton more experience than Saeed, uh, I, I think he's he's probably you know um, 
on thin ice at this point. I mean, look at his record. He's seven and five in the UFC. Not really great. I think he'll be seven and six after this. And I think he he may be very close to getting cut and going to like uh, I don't know. I don't know if Bellator would take him. Probably the PFL or uh, I don't know. Their knuckle would... Eagle, oh, yeah. baby. Forgot about Eagle FC and uh, their embarrassing card. Jesus, Rashad <laughs> Evans. Oh you know, God. you know, I'm gonna be watching that. No doubt about it. Oh, uh, uh, as am I. I wanna, I wanna watch that train wreck. But... You know, you know what's funny because like we've had this MMA drought. I don't think I told you this, but I spent fucking hours trying to find the risen card and by find i think you know what i mean by find eventually i found yeah. it but let's just say i had to learn russian a little bit so uh huh. yeah it was it was fun uh, I, I was one of those little bitches that couldn't stay up but yeah we'll be watching ego fc uh yeah so for this fight uh i'm going with saeed uh i don't know I, i'm always on like my first instinct unless i know the guy's a killer or you know a, a submission artist it's just to go with the decision. I don't know why. Um, and I think here, um, my gut is telling me decision just because I, there is a chance that Brian can, you know, boom Saeed. Um, but I think more than likely Saeed's rather, I think the more likely scenario is that Saeed wins by decision. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm going by decision. Not to say that Saeed can't submit Brian or vice versa or say you can't knock out Brian, but that's the most likely scenario in my brain at least. Next bout at lightweight, we have a fight between Dakota, Harry Bush, and Oh man. <laughs> yeah, he's back. The Bushmaster is back. And Vyashlav Boroshev, aka Slava Claus. This one's basically, I hate to say it, it's a showcase <laughs> fight for Slava Claus uh Borshev because um what he did in the contender series to get into the UFC was pretty damn spectacular. He knocked out if I recall Chris Duncan was undefeated at the time. Yeah, he was undefeated. He locked him out with a left hook. It was freaking brutal, man, because I, I'm re-watching this and I remember watching it live because it, it was one of those like Gianni the Greek picks that it's like, hey, this fight's gonna go under and I'm gonna go with the the guy, despite having a lesser record and a loss on his record in, in Borshev, in Borshev, that is, um, he was a better striker and he proved it, man. It was disgusting. And he is a very good striker. I actually went back and watched a lot of his fights and he's very aggressive on the feet, but not too aggressive. He attacks the body. He, he at one point in his fight with William Starks, the only loss on his record, which I call bullshit on, I think he won that fight. He should be undefeated. But I, I was looking at him and I'm thinking, is there a way that Dakota Bush can, you know, take advantage of, of his striking? And I thought maybe there is because he seemed like a headhunter. But no, he mixes it up very well to the body. He attacks the liver very nicely. And when he wins, he does a traditional uh, <laughs> Russian dance. So I'm excited to see that for Dakota Bush. And actually, I'll read the odds off because I keep fucking forgetting. Minus 180 for Borshev. And come back on Bush is plus 150. Uh, for Bush, he's a tough guy. He's very explosive. He's very good on the feet, but not great on the feet. I think this fight's going to be primarily standing. Uh, Dakota Bush, he is a pretty solid wrestler, but he doesn't tend to use his wrestling too often. He came into the UFC and he fought Austin Hubbard, where he looked good in the first round. Unfortunately, he took it on short notice and he did slow down. Austin Hubbard took advantage of that. And the thing about Dakota Bush is that he is a bit of a fast starter. Uh, he might have had the UFC jitters in that first fight with Austin Hubbard. Uh, but yeah, at this point, man, we have a, a good striker versus a great striker in in uh, Borshev. So I predict this one to go the distance, unfortunately. I think Borshev, he's very solid and his takedown defense is very, very good. Although I will say he did fall for the inside trip twice with William Stark. And I think that's what cost him the fight, despite him not necessarily dominating on the feet. He did more on the feet to win the fight, but he got taken down twice, a bit of top control, and that ended up losing him the fight. So if Dakota Bush does win this fight, it will have to be based off of his wrestling and controlling Borshev on the ground, just enough to edge out the rounds but i i don't see that happening anymore at this point at 30 years old training with team alpha male 
for a majority of his time fighting. I don't see him getting taken down. And if he does, it's going to be surprising. But I do have Borshev to win this one by decision. I would love to go by knockout. I just don't see Dakota Bush getting knocked out. I don't think he's ever been knocked out. And uh, I just see Borshev really putting on a clinic. He's he's fighting a pretty good opponent in Dakota Bush. Unfortunately for Bush, he he's not winning this one. But I do have Borshev to win this one by a unanimous decision. Yeah, this one... <clears throat> This one isn't what I, you know, another one I wouldn't call a barn burner. Um, and that is to say, Dakota Bush can be knocked out. I just don't think that the uh, chess lab, um, yeah, chess lab is the one to do it. Training with alpha male, I would say he probably has the ground advantage, you know, in the sense that you said that uh, at the very least he has the defense. You know, I don't know if he's going to have like the chain wrestling to go along with that but uh for sure he's got to have that uh, at the very least that defense they, they should have you know if his team uh you know they're at team alpha maybe it, um you know uh cares about you know anything that they're doing uh hopefully defense is you know their number yeah you know, well i should say cardio should be their number one priority you know you know so guys don't gas out uh, but defense, you know, uh, on the ground, you know, takedown defense, uh, grappling defense, reverses to to get up, uh, or hopefully a priority. Uh, we'll see. Uh, this is one. I don't know. I may be vacuuming or something during this fight. Who knows? Depending on how the first round goes. Um, but I don't see. I don't see either guy finishing each other. I anticipate uh, the uh, chess love uh, to get at least two rounds as well. Uh, I think I th also think this is going to go the distance, um, but who knows? Maybe Dakota uh, Dakota Bush will uh, uh, maybe get a first round knockout. Who knows? Maybe I jinx this, but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm completely staying away from this card in general. Um, honestly, this whole card, uh, with the maybe the exception of the m main event. Uh, yeah, is is a stay away. I know, I know. There's there's that whole thing where you know you, your mouth is watering because you think this is a juicy card and you know you want to sink your teeth in and go all in. But this is not that card. If you do have the need uh, to be that de uh, degenerate, uh, go light on this card if you have to, including this fight. Next bout at featherweight, we've got downtown TJ Brown versus Gabriel Mowgli Benitez. And currently the odds are in favor of Benitez, minus 190, comeback on Brown, plus 160. Benitez, I think, although he's 33 years old, he has really, I don't want to say let me down, but he has not looked great in his last few fights. And granted, his last fight, he got completely dominated by Billy Q. It it was kind of a surprise to me because I know how good Billy Q is, but for Mowgli not to really have much offense or much success against Billy Q anywhere, it really makes me wonder why he's a minus 190 because essentially TJ Brown is like a lesser version of Billy Q. I think they're both uh, really good, and I should say they're both really good black belts, really good off of their ground, off of their off of their back. TJ Brown's Striking has improved significantly. He's a lot more comfortable on the feet, but he is susceptible to the leg kicks, which then makes me swing the pendulum back to Benitez. If I'm betting, I'm like, oh, Benitez has some good kicks to the to the legs, and that could really impact the fight. Maybe a couple of those might really hurt TJ Brown. This one's tough for me to break down because the plus 160 on TJ Brown is always nice. Knowing how much improved he is now that he's in glory MMA and fitness with James Krause, it really improved his game, but he's not the most durable guy, and I don't think he has the best fight IQ. Against Mowgli, it's tough to really pick him as a dog, and it's really tough to, to say how confident I am in Benitez. I will pick him in this particular fight to win. Uh, I don't like those odds, so I would say to be safe, it'll be like a dog or pass for me. I'm not touching this one. I think Benitez should win. I think he's good enough still. But for me, it looks like he is winding down despite his age only being 33. Uh, TJ Brown, he's not durable. He gets dropped a lot. He's a black belt, but he gets submitted. Uh, you know what I mean? Like he's a little too sloppy for me. Although he is improving, I'd like to see how he does. 
I have to go with Benitez to win this one. Uh, I will say actually a late stoppage. I'll say maybe round number round number two, like late round number two or early round number three. I think he might be able to get the stoppage. But again, I'm not touching this. I'd probably stay away from it. But I'll go with Benitez to win this one by, I'll say, sec- third round stoppage. Third round. Yeah, I'm not sure why they have him with that belt. I don't know what organization that's from in the topology picture. Uh, but they should have something more recent, you know, where he's shown uh, giving up to Billy Q, which is a fight I think he should have won. Um, anyway, because he beat Justin James, and Justin James was like the guy last year, you know? Justin James like is what the, Harry Hunsucker is now, dude. He's the GOAT. Yeah. Yeah, he's... Um, but anyway, that was a letdown. And uh, I'm not really confident in him to win here. I mean, he should. I mean, not just based off the based off of the um, the odds. Yeah. Um, he's, yeah, man. I mean, he, sh- he should win, but the odds aren't, aren't showing a lot of confidence in that. So that should tell you uh, this is probably something to stay away from as well. I mean, I'll, I'll have him, you know, take a... a a limp wristed decision, but you know, further than that, I'd say, yeah, stay away from this fight. You think this is the perfect example to bust out that new catchphrase we were talking about? Oh, possibly. Yeah. So if you're betting this card, which not necessarily this card, but if you're betting this fight, be prepared to suck cock and bet chalk. Yeah. Cause it's, you, you'll be doing, you know, it's like a Schrodinger's cat. You know, if you're familiar with that concept, You'll be doing both simultaneously anyway, because uh, it's 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 sort of like it's lose lose. Even if you win, you lost because it's a bad bet. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but you know it is what it is. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, yeah. You better you better get your uh, your chapstick ready and make sure you you know you drink enough hot you know warm tea or something. Get that throat lubed up. Our next bout at welterweight, we've got Ramiz Brahima versus Court the Crusher McGee. And currently the odds have it in favor of McGee minus 120 comeback on Brahima plus 100, which is interesting. I honestly would have thought Brahima would have been favored, but I, I understand why he's out of plus money because he got that ass whoop by uh, Max Griffin, although he looked really good against uh, Sasha Platnikov and he got a very nasty submission over him with a rear naked choke. You can't really forget that ass whooping. And the thing about Court McGee is that he's very tough. He's very durable. Despite him recently losing to Carlos Condit, he did come back and beat Claudio Silva, which I think that's really propelling him into that minus 120 status because he beat a older jujitsu specialist in Brahimas primarily. He's really good on the ground. And the thought process is if, if McGee can beat Silva, who's like fantastic on the ground, he should be able to beat Brahima. The thing is that I, I don't think that makes sense to me because Brahima, he's 29 years old. He's very, very young. He's very, very aggressive. And I don't think he's going to be afraid of getting hit by Court McGee. I, I think everything right now is on Brahima's side. My concern with betting Brahima is that if Court McGee, who is notorious with his takedown defense, can keep it on the feet. It might be a tough night for Brahima, but I think Brahima is a dog, man. I think he's willing to continuously go after that takedown and make you suffer on the ground. It's worth a shot at plus 100. I think Brahima, youth being on his side, fighting at a Fortis MMA with um, Safe Sayud, willing to yell at him if he's fucking up. I think it's a good bet. I'm actually going to go with the underdog here. I'm going to go with Ramiz Brahima to win this one by a, I want to say decision, but I think he has enough to put on a Sean Brady-esque performance against uh, Court McGee and then just edge it out, just getting continuous takedowns or at least holding him up against the cage, making Court McGee work and not letting Court McGee use his striking because I think Court McGee is the better striker, but not by much. So I'll go with Brahim to win this one by a decision. Yeah, this is not going to be another barn burner. Uh, I'm not really sure what Court McGee's still doing in the UFC. Um, I know this guy, he was in the Ultimate Fighter, and he was trained by, well, who really cares? Uh, but there's a lot of red on his record, uh, including, you know, I'm glad Carlos Condit won, 
but we're not talking about you know Carlos Condit versus um, uh, you know the Carlos Condit of uh, when he fought uh, what's that guy's name Dan Hardy or even the Carlos Condit you know that went toe to toe with uh, uh, the real ruthless Robbie Lawler you know way back when. Funny enough, I still remember that fight because uh, we saw it at your mom's wedding. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> I ditched my mom's wedding to watch that. Fight. We were up in the um, the um, the bar, yeah, and I had my bar area. yeah, I had my uh, my trusty, uh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, and I mean, so he he didn't you know he didn't necessarily lose to that Carlos Condit. He lost to a depleted. Uh, is Carlos Condit retired? Did he retire yeah, he, he retired. Yeah. Yeah, so he fought, you know, against the retiring condo, uh, Carlos Condit. Uh, so it doesn't really bode well. And that doesn't say that uh, Ramiz is going to go out there, you know, beat the living hell out of him. Uh, but we're talking about a 37-year-old Court McGee who I have no idea what he's even doing in the, you know, what he's been doing in the UFC the last few years or what he, why he's still there. I don't know, man. This is not really anything I'm looking forward to, to be honest. Uh, I think I'll probably be uh, polishing something during this fight. Polishing the floor. Uh, I don't know, maybe cleaning the bathroom. Who the hell knows? Uh, but I'll be keeping busy during this fight. Uh, here, you might as well just flip a coin uh, to see who's going to win. Uh, probably, It'll probably be Court McGee just due to, I think, he'll have more volume. Uh you know, I, I think Ramiz is probably going to go for, uh, I wouldn't call it a kill shot either, uh, but he's going to go for, you know, maybe more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Shit. I haven't seen fights in a while, so I'm yeah. kind of rusty in the terminology. Um, significant strikes, you know, versus, uh, you know, the probably more output from Court McGee, which he tends to do. Uh, but yeah, I'm not looking to watch another court, you know, I'm not looking forward to another court McGee fight. Uh, I, I will be going with court McGee to get the, the decision. I don't know. It, it'll probably be a split decision. I think if he gets it, which I think he will, um, I think he'll get maybe the first two rounds or the second and third round. Well, actually, you know what? I think he is going to get the second and third round, uh, cause he tends to, um, um yeah finishing strong is, is probably not 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 uh, the right terminology but he does you know go go yeah going hard you know it's not i don't know how else to put it uh but he does finish you know semi okay i guess um but yeah stay away from this one as well this is not a great betting card can't emphasize that enough Next up at middleweight, Jamie the Nightwolf Pickett versus Ugly Man Joseph Holmes. And currently the odds are minus 150 for Holmes. Come back on Jamie Pickett, plus 130. And this is a moment where I will be sucking cock and betting truck because I'm taking Joseph Holmes. It's more so a fade on Jamie Pickett. Uh, both of these guys are pretty damn tall. Six foot four for Holmes. Come back on Pickett is six foot two. Essentially the same fighter, man, uh, except that. Joseph Holmes, he's more active. So Joseph Holmes, he trains out of uh, Glory MMA and Fitness with uh, James Krause. He won his bout in the Contender Series, and then he actually fought one more time before getting called up in Fury, where he beat Jonathan Patti, which if I recall correctly, that's the same guy that Pickett beat to get into the UFC. He knocked him out, and actually they both knocked him out. Jamie Pickett in the UFC has been a damn letdown because he he came in after beating Patti, knocking him out, claiming how desperately he wants to be in the UFC. And he discussed how, like, uh, essentially he, he was talking to his family and, like, he really needed to really elevate his game and get into the UFC. And he's not really been proving to be a UFC-level fighter. He fought Star Poli last, and that was a god-awful fight. It was so damn bad. Like, he barely won because he threw more. It was the Nganu versus Lewis type of fight at middleweight where none of these guys are doing shit. And then the guy who did slightly more ended up winning. And I'm betting Joseph Holmes because I know he'll actually try to win this fight. Jamie Pickett, I think he's talented, but I don't think his I don't think he belongs in the UFC. Like he 
he demonstrated he has power, he has skills, but he just doesn't have it to be in the UFC, at least Joseph Holmes right now. I think he can beat Jamie Pickett right now. So I'll go with Joseph Holmes to win this one. I think he's going to use his height advantage, his better ground game. So I think eventually either Holmes drops Pickett and takes it to the ground and dominates there, or, man, I hate to say it, I think Jamie Pickett has the type of power to knock out Joseph Holmes, but I don't think he'll be able to utilize it against a guy as tall as he is. So I'll, I'll go with Joseph Holmes to win this one by a submission. I think he drops Pickett with maybe a jab or something. And then he takes his back and chokes him out. So I'll go with Holmes to win this one by second round rear naked choke. I don't know. Um, this isn't, you know, like I said, this isn't really going to be the most action packed card. So I'll, uh, I'll change it up a bit. I'm going to go with the underdog here. I'm going to go with Jamie Pickett uh, to win by second round knockout. I think he will get him. Uh, I think he'll, let's see. The sequence is going to be, he's going to get him with a left hook. Uh, and then get him with, you know, and then uh, what's his name? Uh, Joseph is going to fall to the ground. Uh, he's going to go onto his belly. And then uh, Jamie Pickett is going to take his back, flatten him out, and then finish him with uh, ground and pound, you know, where he's, where he's uh, kind of uh, throwing the punches under his armpit to sort of like, you know, into like uppercuts on the ground, so to speak. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like uh, Hendo versus Fedor. Yeah, yeah, more or less. Yeah, so he's going to beat him by uh, armpit, you know, uh, uh, take your back armpit uppercuts. Yeah. I'll take you. Yeah. You're confident about that, are you? Um, just, you know, I got to mix it up, man. I can't. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I really don't know who's going to win this fight, but so I'm just going with that for now. It's, yeah, it's kind of like a 50-50. If Jamie Pickett shows up, it's it, it could really fuck up my bet, but he hasn't really shown up. So Yeah, not really. Yeah. And before we begin the main card, I'd like to ask, please like, share, subscribe. It's a new year. We were trying to try new things here. We actually got a Discord, so I'll be leaving a link in the description below. Follow us on Twitter. I've been a little bit more active on Twitter. A bit of update for what I'm doing. As some of you might know, I, I do local MMA judging here. I actually be judging a fight on the 14th, which is this coming Friday, for a local promotion. It's a mixture of amateur bouts and professional bouts. Funny enough, I, I looked at the card because it just hit me up like a couple of days ago saying if I wanted to do it. And I said, sure, what the hell, why not? And I looked at it, and there's going to be a local championship fight for a rinky-dink promotion, which I won't say, but it stars a former Bellator alum and a former Ultimate Fighter. I don't want to say alum because he fought for the qualifying rounds and he didn't win, but let's just say he's very prominent in the bare-knuckle scene. If you have been watching Bare Knuckle, Recently fought in bare knuckle and he has wins over a former UFC champion and a former UFC vet. If you can guess who it is, leave a comment below and you'll get internet points. But yeah, let's start off with the main card opener at featherweight. Joe Anderson Brito versus Bill Algio, Senior Perfecto. Currently the odds are in favor of Brito, minus 125, come back on Algio. He is a plus 105. It's interesting odds because Bill Algio, I think he's a good enough fighter that I think he has a chance against Brito. But man, it's like a tough one because looking back at Brito, he's very powerful, very strong, fights out of shooter box. So he's he's a very he's a very powerful dude. I'll say that his fight against uh, Diego Lopez was interesting because he fought in the contender series to get into the UFC. He won both rounds, but he ended up eye poking Lopez in the third and ended up being a technical decision, unanimous for him, although they took a point away. Uh, he did very well off of his, um, not off of his back. He did very well in the guard of Lopez, who's a very good jiu-jitsu fighter. And Bill Algio, I think he's good at jiu-jitsu, but not off of his back. Anderson's very strong, but he's going to be at a significant disadvantage here. He's got a one and a half inch reach disadvantage against Algio and four inch disadvantage in height against Algio. So I'm always concerned about the knees from the taller guy, especially like a funky, lanky guy like Algio. Although Brito should win this one by control time on top, 
And then just being the more aggressive guy, I do worry about Algio landing something or just being the more conditioned fighter. I think Brito, he's very jacked, and I'm worried about the pace of the fight. I, I worry that he might gas out, especially now in the UFC, being that it's his first fight. It's one of those fights that I'm, I'm interested in seeing and not betting. I will go with Brito. I think he's a very solid fighter, but I am worried about Algio in this fight, and that's kind of weird to say because – when you say things like that, like, oh, I'm worried about Bill Algio or I'm worried about um, Austin Hubbard, it's not because I think they're excellent, great fighters that can win at any time. It's more so that I'm worried about the fighter that I'm betting to win might fuck himself over by exhausting himself, trying to get down to the lanky, tall guy who's decent enough in one particular area that that fighter, Algio or Austin Hubbard, can then come back and beat your ass. So that's kind of where I'm worried here. I'm not too sold on Brito. This is the test for me. If he can dominantly beat Bill Algio, I'll start considering him a pretty solid featherweight, and we'll see from there. He's 12-2-1, and one, and watching his highlights has been nice. So I'll go with Brito to win, but I'm not touching this one. I'll say uh, Brito by decision. I don't think he'll be able to finish Algio. This one's a very interesting one. I think... Um... Yeah, funny enough, uh, I think Brito reminds me a little bit of, um, damn, he's funny, Figueredo, you know, to a certain extent. Um, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, uh, I don't want to count out uh, Algeo, but it's hard to, you know, I think it's going to be a close fight. I don't think he's going to get his ass whooped too bad. Um, but, you know, when your last... You have to be realistic, man. When your last win was uh, the Alpha Ginger, uh, you know, after what he went through, it's not uh, doesn't really seem like all that big of a win. And then when you lose to, uh, when you lose to uh, the Llama, you know, Ricardo Llamas, I always thought that you know I should have been his name, the Llama. You know, he should have been the Llama, so he could have brought you know some street cred. To, to actual llamas so i think it had been seen as kind of like tough you know street animal but anyway so he doesn't um yeah man i mean looking at his record yeah he beat tim drooling twice uh, dueling Tim dueling twice and he's one and two in the ufc you know only with his only win at, at yeah it's hard to, it's hard to get behind this guy um um and, uh, you know, on the other side, Brito, he does remind me a little bit, you know, being kind of a short, stocky guy, you know, a la, uh, what's his name, uh, Figueredo a little bit. I mean, he doesn't have his style, but, you know, seems like a tough guy. Um, you know, with his only win, um, that being a decision uh, over Diego Lopez in the Contender Series, uh, it's kind of hard to gauge him, you know, in the UFC. Yeah, I mean, he fought these other guys, and he won, you know, by KO a few times. Uh, you know, he submitted some guys. So unless he brings all that against Bill Algio, um, you know, Bill Algio's got a shot. But like I said, yeah, Bill's a hard guy to get to get behind. Uh, so just off principle, um, I guess you know, I, I really don't feel confident going with the underdog here. So I'll go with Brito. Um, I think, I think he might get his submission against Bill Algio. If he's going to get a submission, I think Bill Algio is probably the guy. You know, he's 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 probably licking his chops. He's like, hmm, not you know, not in a gay way or anything, just licking his chops as like looking at Bill Algio and you know, like winking at him or something. But only because he wants to submit him, not because he wants to choke you know choke him out and have Bill Algio say, yeah, choke me, daddy. Uh, all right, that was a lot funnier in my head, but um, yeah, so I'm going with Brito. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, by rear naked choke, I think he'll take Algeo's back maybe in the second round, late second round, uh, and then submit him. It's about at heavyweight the vanilla gorilla Chase Sherman versus Jake the prototype Collier. Funny enough, I think vanilla gorilla is now being considered a like derogatory term against white people, so uh. Chase the <laughs> Sherman versus <laughs> prototype Jake Collier. Uh, man, this one's bleh, bleh, bleh. 
minus 125 for Collier come back on Chase Sherman plus 105. Jay Collier, I don't want to say I'm a fan of him, but I get behind Jay Collier. I'm like, you know, he, he made his choice. You know what I mean? He was a middleweight and then he uh, ballooned up to heavyweight. So good for him, you know, living his best life, still fighting, still pretty uh, athletic. Uh, I still remember him throwing spinning back kicks in like when he was not a balloon animal and Chase Sherman, damn Chase Sherman. Like he's, he's skilled, right? You, you see what he can do on the feet and then he pulls some crap against Parker Porter and Andre Arlovsky. A lot of people had Chase Sherman to beat Andre, right? I didn't. I thought Andre was going to beat him, and I made some pretty decent money betting against Chase Sherman. But that's Andre Arlovsky, right? Like, he's <laughs> – funny enough, Andre Arlovsky now is the Caitlin Chukagian of the heavyweight division. Quote me on that. And then Parker Porter, man, I thought Chase Sherman was going to – run through Parker Porter, at least win the decision. And knowing what I, what I saw in that fight was the, the will to win and Chase Sherman left him and I cannot ever bet him again. I will take a shot on Jay Collier. I think he can win this fight. I thought he beat Carlos Felipe. I thought he did enough in this fight. I see Jay Collier again, being the dynamic fighter on the feet, Chase Sherman. Again, if things aren't going his way, he, he freezes up. So I don't know if he's gotten a sports psychologist to help him out. I think that will do him some good, but I cannot take a shot on Chase Sherman. I'll go with Jay Collier. I think both of these guys need a win, but I think Jay Collier, I think he has a little bit extra in him to make sure he wins. So I'll go with Collier to win this one by a, by a decision. I don't think, uh, I don't think he'll knock out Chase Sherman. If anything, Chase Sherman should be able to knock out Collier if you want to take that shot of the under because Chase Sherman, he's, he's a, he's a front runner, man. He'll, he'll go after you. He'll hit you with your best shot, hit you with his best shot. But if you can't, if he doesn't knock you out and you continue to be there, I feel like he breaks. So I think uh, Jake has enough to win this one by a decision. Yeah, this is another, I think the way I see this fight going is I see this being the, the, um, um, the only other fight where, you know, they simultaneously knock each other out, kind of like, uh, you know, how Rocky and Apollo did. Uh, that was fake, but, um, you know, in real life, it was Fedor and Matt Mitrione. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they kn knocked each <laughs> other out, and but Mitrione, you know, he just kind of woke up a little bit faster than Fedor. Uh, that's the way I see this fight playing out, man. I, I don't, I don't know, man. It's not... I mean, the odds say it all. This is like basically a coin flip fight. Neither of these guys is good enough uh, to beat the other, I think. Uh, I think the way to go about this fight is, is betting me over. Um, uh, that's probably one of the only things I know for... I don't want to say for sure. That's a pretty strong words, but yeah. Well, the only thing I know for sure is neither, neither of these guys has knockout power. Neither of these guys is a wrestler. Neither of these guys uh, is really a submission artist. Uh, it's going to be, you know, uh, huffing and puffing back and forth for three rounds. And whoever gets their hand raised, okay. Uh, but I don't know. I guess maybe Jake Collier. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I guess maybe he's shown... Yeah, they're showing the wrong picture, man. When you actually tap on his on his profile, it's showing him as a middleweight or something, you know. When he had a uh, when you know he was only uh when he only had one chin. Um, but I guess I'll go with Jake Collier just because he did beat uh you know one of the contenders for goat, uh, Gian Vilante, uh, by decision. Uh, but you know he was into Carlos Felipe by split decision. That was pretty weak sauce. And I don't know, man, it, it, this, this is like, you know, even, uh, even if, uh, you know, Walter Mercado was still alive and he called his hotline, I, I seriously doubt even he could give you the winner of this fight. Explain to the audience who doesn't know who Walter Mercado is. Uh, Walter Mercado was, um, he was sort of a, a Spanish, um, um, shit, what's that guy's name? Uh, what, the oldies? I'm going, yeah, a Richard Simmons mix with Liberace. Yeah, yeah I would say, uh, you know, 
let's say if Richard Simmons, uh, you know, read you your fortune instead of trying to get you in shape uh, and wore, you know, I think had a better makeup artist than most uh, females out there uh, and wore some spectacularly, um, you know, uh, bedazzled robes, uh, that's Walter Mercado. You know, you would call him and be like, wow, that's, that, uh, that lady man or that man lady has, uh, you know, very spot on predictions. Um, and so that, that's who Walter Mercado was. Um, you know, he's really big in the, you know, um, Latin community since, you know, they're, they're very big on horoscopes and shit like that. So, you know, they, they let, you know, they probably bought that guy, you know, uh, Rolls Royces, islands, and, you know, all the pool boys he could handle. <laughs> Speaking of islands, that's funny. A special kind of island. Yeah. Let's move on, though. <laughs> Let's not talk about pedophile islands. Let's talk about yeah. uh, Raw Dog, Brandon Royval versus Rogério Bontorin. Minus 165 for Royval and come back on Bontorin plus 140. Interesting bout. Royval's coming off of two losses. Bontorin is coming off of uh, two losses, but rebounded against Matt Schnell. Schnell's um, game plan was that he was taking pictures, is what uh, DC said. He, he didn't do much. Bontorin was always going first. And Matt Schnell was just kind of anticipating getting hit. And when he let his hands go, he was looking great, but he, he waited too damn much. Brandon Royval ain't doing that shit. I am a huge fan of Brandon Raw Dog Royval. I think I love his style. He's kill or be killed. Every single fight he's in is exciting. His fight with Brandon Moreno was excited. Unfortunately, he got hurt. And then we saw what Brandon Moreno ended up becoming, the featherweight champion of the world. And then he lost to Pantoja. Who, man, Pantoja, you always sleep on his grappling. And although Pantoja is mostly known as like a swang and banging type of style fighter, he is the guy who beat Moreno twice. So you kind of sleep on that. Uh, with this particular fight, we'll see how this goes. I am concerned about Brandon Royval and the ground because Bontorin's a solid black belt. He's a strong dude, despite him being the smaller guy. He's at uh, five foot five and Royval being five foot nine. I do worry about Brandon Royval getting taken down and then being too active off of his back instead of keeping it on the feet, which I think he should. And I'll tell you this, if Brandon Royval goes out there and does his raw dog style, throwing elbows, knees, whatever, I think he is going to knock out Bontorin. I don't think he's going to try to play the game on the ground, knowing that he tried that too much with Pantoja and he got submitted. If I was in his shoes, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to risk getting choked out by a very strong guy, especially early. So I think Brandon Royval is going to use his length. He's got a, what, three and a half inch reach advantage over Bontorin. And he's so damn dangerous, man. He, he'll he uppercut you, go into a spinning back fist, spinning back elbow, throw knees. He's super fucking fun to watch. I'm a huge fan of Raw Dog. So I got Raw Dog to win this one by a second round knockout. I think Bontorin might get tired in the first It'll be competitive, and then Raw Dog takes over in the second and then finds something significant, something pointy, either the elbow or the knee that knocks out Bontorin. So I'll go with Raw Dog to win second round knockout. I'm actually going with uh, Roy Val as well, but I don't think he'll knock him out. I think he is, I think he got a, uh, I think he's gotten a, <laughs> I think he's gotten so called a raw deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, being, you know, going back to his fight with Brandon Moreno. Uh, I mean, props to Brandon to everything he's done since. Uh, you know, and I think, uh, yeah, Alexander Pantoja definitely deserved that win. And uh, I would argue, uh, you know, giving Alexander Pantoja um, the fight with uh, Moreno instead of the trilogy with Figueredo. I don't think, I don't think that was, I don't think that was, you know, that's deserved. I think it's more of a, promotional thing you know they're trying to uh milk it for all it's worth versus uh you know giving i think alexander pantoja is more deserving of that uh but anyway um you know looking at that and not you know looking at the circumstances under his last two losses um you'd say oh man Royal's finished but i think he's a very exciting guy uh and if anything i think he's actually I see him winning by um, maybe even triangle here because uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, Hogerio 
being Brazilian, he's going to want to jujitsu his way to victory. But I think he's going to underestimate Brandon's jujitsu. Uh, and I think he's, you know, being that he has kind of, uh, uh, you know, he's taller, so he has those longer legs. Uh, I think they, I think he's he's very uh, he's very capable and uh, very likely that he catches him in a triangle, um, either from his back or taking mount and then, you know, getting him in a, uh, I don't want to say Khabib triangle, but, you know, kind of how Khabib uh, uh, triangle submitted that uh, the um, cross-eyed ginger guy. Yes, yes. Um, Justin Gagey. Uh, yeah. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, so I'm going actually with Brandon uh, by triangle in the second round. Uh, this is actually going to be um, the first fight where probably you know where I'm probably not going to be cleaning anything. I'll, I'll probably sit down and, and watch it. But then for the next fight, I don't know, man. Breaking this fight down: Caitlin Chukagian versus Jennifer Maya the second. Uh, blonde fighter is currently the favorite, minus one seventy. Come back on Jennifer Maya, plus one forty. Not much to say. They fought once before. They fought on the uh, West Coast versus East Coast gangster fight card. And all I remember is that uh, Caitlin Chukagan beat the shit out of Jennifer Maya. Going back and rewatching it, uh, beat the shit out of Jennifer Maya isn't the right term. She decisioned the shit out of Jennifer Maya. And man, just I don't know what to really say about it. I, I will say Jennifer Maya's striking has gotten better. And by better, I mean it went from like a four to a five out of 10 which is better. It's just not great. Uh, Chukagian, I will give her that. Like she is definitely number, honestly, she's number two in that division because she consistently wins fights. She's only lost to a handful of fighters in the UFC, one being the champion herself, Valentina Shevchenko. And uh, oddly enough, well, actually also to Jessica Andrade, who is a former champion at a lighter weight class. Uh, Jessica I plays a factor because I think that's one of uh, Chukagian's only losses as well. Jessica I, who Jennifer Maya recently beat in her last fight. Uh, Jennifer Maya did look better in that fight. Like she was better striking. And that's why I mean she went from like a four to a five. But um, yeah, it wasn't much to make me think if she's going to beat Caitlin Chukagian. Kate, Caitlin, although we know and we make jokes about her, you know, she she wins fights, whether it be by, you know, point fighting or the kiaz. One particular thing I actually wrote down in my notes that I, I have to bring up, kind of to stroke myself off a little bit, that being a judge myself and being in cage side and watching fights and shit, uh, I tend to write notes down kind of to justify my scorecards. But in reality, though, you don't see everything because there are certain moments in there that Nothing's happening, so you look away for, I mean, a brief second to write something down, like, oh, uh, Fighter X did this, that makes me lean towards him at the end of the round, and then something happens, and you end up missing it, but it's not significant enough for it to be like a fight-ending moment, it's more of like, a, like, oh, something happened, but who did what? So with Caitlin Chukagan, what makes her so damn, I guess, uh, her, her overall record being 16-4, and four, and what helps her win these decisions is that these fucking judges aren't always paying attention, but they hear the yeah, yeah, yeah from fucking Caitlin Chukagian, which in their fucking mind, it's like, oh, sh Caitlin Chukagian is landing punches that I didn't see, which leads them to the 30 27s for Caitlin Chukagian, which I think is going to happen here. Like, that's what she does. She is a good fighter. I'm not going to deny her that. She is a very solid fighter. She's good on the ground. She's good with the striking when she lets her hands go, but her primary weapon is the the fucking tennis sounds. So I don't think Jennifer Maya is going to do anything different. I think she might try to grapple Caitlin Chukagian more. And I think that would bode her well. And I think she could win a decision by just controlling her on the ground because if it stays on the feet and if Caitlin gets back up, I think Caitlin is smart enough to try to outpoint Jennifer, even if she's been controlled for a bit. I'm talking too much about this goddamn fight. Caitlin Chukagian is going to win. Chuk, there it is. Minus 170, I'm actually adding her to a parlay. I think she wins this one by a decision. Yeah, Kate Chukagian is not, uh, you know, she, you might want, you know, you might call her the, the decision goat. But she, she, you know, her fights are, oh, Jesus. I don't want to sound, you know, get too down on her. Um, but, I mean, come on, you have to, oh, jeez. Kate Chukagian. 
uh, Jennifer Maya, I'm actually, um, uh, you know, ever since her, sure, she, she lost to Valentina, but she's actually given Valentina her toughest uh, challenge to date, you know? She gave Valentina all she could handle. It was, I would say, Jennifer Maya is, uh, shit, what's that girl that just retired? She's kind of a little heavy Canadian. She likes to grapple. Oh, uh, Felicia Spencer. Uh, Felicia, <laughs> yeah, heavy. she's like the, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. She, she's like the, uh, Felicia, you know, she's like the Brazilian Felicia Spencer of this division in that, you know, she, uh, I don't think she could, she could have whooped Valentina, but I think Valentina just didn't expect to have that tough a fight against Jennifer Maya. I think if they fight again, Valentina's going to whip her ass, like, you know, from left to, you know, from, from, uh, you know, from side, you know, from one end of the cage to the other. Uh, she's, you know, she's going to like pick her apart. She's going to be ready for that shit. Um, but yeah, man, betting, yeah, Caitlin Chukagan, fuck. Okay, well, here's the thing. I hate Ch- Caitlin Chukagan, I said it. Uh, but that's because she Armenian? lost to Jessica Andrade. Wait, what? Because <laughs> she's Armenian? <laughs> well, I was going to say because she, <laughs> she lost me money against Jessica Andrade. Like one little, one little uh, tap, you know, uh, uh, to the bread basket and she goes down from Jessica Andrade. I'm like, what the flying fuck? I mean, she was supposed to dominate her. She had the length, but apparently, Caitlin Chukagian is the fucking Stefan Struve of this division, man. Uh, Jesus, I hate her so much. She lost me money because she's not really that good. Yeah, she whose fault the, is that? We know the rules. The, yeah, man. I went against my own rules, but still, yeah. I was like, fuck, a giant, you know, you know, stepping on a a, a strong midget. Oh, Jesus. The fuck knew, you know, uh, Gimli was gonna take down fucking Treebeard and shit. Um, but anyway, yeah, Caitlin, yeah, Chukagian can, uh, you know, her claim to fame is that she beat a Shevchenko, you know, but she, you know, she's probably not gonna specify which Shevchenko when asked. That's true, she can um, say, I beat Shevchenko. Yeah, she's, uh, I'll say this, uh, She'll become champion when Valentina give, gives up that belt in that division. Uh, I think she'll she'll just smother that division and, you know, um, uh, just decision her way to, uh, you know, to a couple of wins and get the belt and decision her way to a couple more wins, you know, to keep the belt. So I'll be taking Jennifer Maya here. I'll be taking her by... Um, I'll be taking her by. Either, I'll be taking her by rear naked choke. The spike pick, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I am a Jennifer Maya fan. Uh, you know, I have been since. So you're the one. Beat, yeah, the only one since she beat uh, JoJo Calderwood. Um, I'm like, oh shit, she beat JoJo, but that was just more JoJo being JoJo. Yep. Uh, and she jojoed her way out of a, you know, out of a title shot. Because I think, if anything, JoJo saved herself. Because uh, Valentina, I think that would have been the first fucking death in in women's MMA. Valentina, like her head would have flown, you know, Valentina would have kicked her head, uh, you know, out of the ring and it would have landed in her uh, fiance's lap. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So I think she she uh, she bit the bullet against Jennifer Maya and saved herself the embarrassment against Valentina Shevchenko. So I like Jennifer Maya. I, I've um, grown to respect her as a person. Uh, I respect her morals, uh, but more so uh, I will respect her even more. I will actually uh, send her a handwritten letter um, if she beats Caitlin Chukagian, no matter how she beats her. Uh, I hope she beats her by rear naked choke, but no matter how she beats her, I will write her a handwritten letter in Portuguese, and you know, uh, we can include a we can include a screenshot of it and me if you want. But yes, that, oh, that's my that's my thing. You've said it, so it has to happen. Yeah. Next bout, main event of the evening: Calvin, the Boston finisher, Kada versus Giga Ninja Chikadze. This fight Kata. is. 
very, very important because, as we discussed earlier, that uh, Volkanovsky is no longer fighting Holloway. So there is talks that, let me get my notes here, Giga might step in, depending on if he wins this fight against Calvin Cater. But right now, the front runner is Korean Zombie. I am interested in this bout, though. If Giga Chukadze does win, I think it wouldn't be out of the question to just slide him in there. Um, I don't know why I said slide him in there. It sounded a little too sexual in my head. But I'm also thinking Josh Emmett. He's a he's a candidate as well that not many people are talking about, but people are discussing Emmett as a possible replacement. Um, I don't know if he's injured, though, because he's always fucking injured. So right now, uh, starting from top to bottom, it's Korean Zombie, possibly Giga Chikadze, and then Triple C. Triple C, I don't think it'll be a likelihood since he's not in the testing pool. But it's very interesting to see how this fight goes. I think Giga, now knowing this, He's going to really try to put a stamp, stamp on it, try to not extend the fight and try to finish Calvin Cater, which may or may not be the best thing. I am worried about picking Giga Chikadze. The reason is when I first heard this of this bout, I'm like, oh shit, there might be some value on Calvin Cater. I think a lot of people have been saying that. I've been on MMA Twitter a lot and I've seen a lot of people discussing the value on Calvin Cater. And let me see where the fudge are the odds for these guys. Currently, the odds are in favor of Giga Chikadze, minus 215, come back on Cater, plus 170. Plus 170 on Calvin Cater on a five-round bout. Uh, gets my mouth watering, man. It's, uh, it's nice to think about that paycheck if you're cashing out on Calvin Cater at plus 170, because the dude is tough as shit. He took an ass whooping from Max Holloway, the, the number two, the quote-unquote best boxer in the UFC, but Giga Chikadze might as well be the best kickboxer in the UFC. A uh, Dude is on a roll right now, but I do have my concerns about him. His last bout was a knockout over Edson Barboza, where he looked fantastic. Giga is a tough son of a bitch, man. He He's a great striker. My concern is... Can he finish Calvin Cater in three rounds or less? And I don't know if he can, which is it's worrisome for me, especially at those odds. I think there might be a lot of pressure on Giga to win, and this could be a spot where Calvin Cater can just swoop in and surprise a lot of people because for him to be minus or plus 170 is a little disrespectful. I, I understand the Giga hype. I think he's a rightful favorite based on his progression him being the better kicker, I wouldn't say the better boxer, but the overall better striker would be Giga Chikadze. I do worry about his cardio in the later rounds. If he can't finish Cater, which I don't think he will, how will that fare? Will he be able to edge out at least three rounds and not get finished if he's exhausted? Uh, I've seen a picture of him. He looks in phenomenal shape. He is talking about moving up to 155 and even 170. At least that's what he's hinting at which kind of concerns me as well, meaning that if he's thinking about moving up in weight and winning championships there, which I think he's capable of doing, especially if he gains a little bit more muscle mass, is he struggling to make 145? If that's the case, I am worried about his gas tank later in the rounds. Calvin Cater, there's really not much to say about Calvin. Calvin, he's a tough bastard. He's got great hands. He's improving his Muay Thai uh, his, his wrestling's not the greatest, but the dude can take an ass whooping and he's always in the fight. His hands are where it's at, though. And Giga's hands, I don't think they're as good as Calvin's. Um, but the thing is, if you kick the shit out of Calvin's legs like Jeremy Stevens did, Giga Chikadze is going to chew them the fuck up. And I think that is Giga's path to victory. Uh, I think at the very minimum, he will win the three rounds, uh, round one, two, and three, pretty decisively to edge him out in the decision, but I will be, if I'm betting Giga, I am worried to shit that Calvin Cater in rounds number four and five, depending on his state, if Giga can beat the crap out of him, whole body, uh, legs, head, torso, I think he should be able to comfortably edge out this decision. Uh, if Giga can knock out or finish Calvin Cater, that's going to solidify him as the number one contender, depending on how he comes out of this fight. I think he will be fighting Volkanovski for that championship belt. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm not touching this bout. I'm just going to enjoy it because of that X factor of if Calvin Cater, who's notoriously tough and the dude can finish anyone in that division, 
minus Max Holloway. Uh, if if it comes down to it, say fifth round, I'm always going to consider Calvin's cardio better than Giga's at that point. And if it's the fifth round and Calvin's still in it, I think he can go out there and maybe get a late round finish. But I have to go with Giga. I think all the momentum's on his side. Although there's a lot of factors that make me a bit doubtful, like his possible cardio issues. I'm not saying that he has any. I'm just, I've seen some things and I'm not too confident that he can do five rounds with a guy like Calvin. But uh, yeah, I'll go with Giga to win this one by a decision. It's going to scare me though. I, I, I'm i not certain if I want to put money on him yet. I think he is a little too out of my price range at that price at minus 215. I think he's a little too rich for me, so I'm staying out of it, I think. Mm. Let me ask you, Jose, do you think it might be wise for me to put like a small bet on Calvin to win by a finish? Because I'm leaning towards it, like just a small amount. If I'm going to bet this fight, I might go with that route, just a small little little inkling, a little, little, little taste of Calvin Cater by finish. Ooh, shit. Uh, very, very possible, but I would say if you're looking to parlay, um, you know. I don't know, man. I think you, this might think, be a parlay well, well, killer for me. Well, here's the thing. Uh, if, if you're looking to, if you believe Giga will win, like, you know, if, if you think there's an 80%, 80% chance that Giga will win, but you don't feel like, oh, you know, you don't want to parlay him with anybody this week. You can always parlay him with somebody off of next week's card. Like parlay him with, uh, I don't know, you know, just a, just a short um, preview of uh, my picks for next week. Uh, maybe with Moreno or even Ilya Tapuria. Uh, yeah, I'll say any of those. Yeah, next week's main event is going to be crazy, man. It's, it's going to be here in Anaheim. And uh, I won't be going to that car just because I think it's overpriced. Nosebleeds, when I took a look at them, were like two, three hundred bucks. And I was like, ah, eh, for that, for this card, eh, I don't think so. Are there nachos, by the way, in Anaheim? I don't remember. Um, I don't know. What I do remember about Anaheim is that the shittiest seats I've ever <laughs> been in in my entire life for any venue. Yeah. You know Jesus. who hates, so, you know those... who, you know who really hates that, that uh, venue? Daniel Cormier, he's lost twice in that fucking arena. John yeah, Jones and well, uh, and Stipe. He yeah. hates Anaheim. That's right. He, I Honda do remember Center. him saying, I do remember him saying, like, yeah, you know, Anaheim's the worst fucking city in the world. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't click with me then, but I was like, wait, oh, yeah, that's right. He just dumbass whooped twice. Yep. But uh, back, to, back to the Giga card, though. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go with Giga to win by by decision. I might be placing a small parlay, not parlay, a small prop bet on this fight. I'm not certain which way I'm going to go. I need to think about it a little bit more. Um, odds are I'll go to the casino and then I'll look at everything and make a brash decision there. But I'll go with Giga to win this one by a decision. I'm actually going with Giga as well. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to say Giga by TKO, maybe in the fourth round. Because uh, Calvin is... Um, he is durable. He is, you know, a tough guy. But, you know, you, you, here's the thing about Calvin that I do know. I don't think he'll ever – I do not believe he will ever be champion. And that isn't to say, you know, he isn't going to have a successful career, you know, what, however he wanted to find success. And he isn't going to beat some tough guys. But he's – I do not see him being, you know, ever beating the toughest guys. Um you know, and getting to the top, mostly because he's, he's going to be, you know, known, you know, he already is known as a, you know, punching bag that can punch back. You know, he, t I, I, don't, I don't know the stats specifically, but I see him taking a lot more shots than he's returning, especially against Max Holloway. That, that, that fight alone fucked up his stats. I think yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I think you might be um, right. I, I need to look at his stats, but if you look at the fight with Jeremy Stevens, he was getting outlanded uh, at least for the first round until he knocked him out. So you might be onto something there. Yeah, he is. Uh, I'll tell you this. Uh, Giga's going to fuck his legs up. He's going to fuck his midsection up. And he might head kick him into oblivion. Um, 
but I think more than likely he's going to fuck his legs up and his midsection. Uh, Giga's boxing has gotten better, but for sure his legs are going to, you know, are, are, are going to fuck Calvin up. He's, you know, the adrenaline and everything else, Calvin's going to be in there. The you know, the announcers, Bisping or whoever the fuck is there, will be like, well, look, you know, he's a tough guy. Uh, hey, thanks. Uh, he's like, oh, buddy. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's a tough guy. He can take those. He's taking those shots, you know, like a champ, but he's not really a champ. Um, yeah, I, re- I really don't see the only. I probably jinx it, but m- most likely not. The only see I went, I, I see, Cater um, winning is uh, if he's improved his defense, which I doubt he has, uh, which means he's going to take a lot of punishment. Uh, in order, you know, he'll probably take like anywhere from four to five shots to land one, if that. Uh, Giga's going to be faster. I think he's going to throw the harder punches. Um, and Calvin just doesn't have the defense or the footwork, um, I think, to to outland Giga. I might be wrong. I might just fucking jinx it, and we're going to see the best Calvin Cater ever. Dude, I'm so worried about gun. that. I am fucking worried about that, and I'll tell you why. Sorry to cut you off, but yeah, the thing the thing I'm thinking about is that he fought Max Holloway a year ago. He got embarrassed on ABC, got his ass completely handed to him. The announcers were like, this fight needs to be stopped. You know he rewatched that fight, and he's had a year to think about it. If if I was Calvin Cater and, and I got my ass beat that fucking bad, it's either going to break me completely where I want to quit and blow my dick off, or it's going to make me train every fucking day to get better and then prove people wrong. So... Like that's one thing that does worry me about betting on Giga's that Calvin might look like a completely different fighter, and it's more so that surprise factor that bothers me with certain fighters, especially with that display of, you know, embarrassment. I have to say by uh, Holloway, so ooh, it it worries me a bit. But um, yeah, it's more so that I. I think Calvin can improve opposed to me doubting Giga's skills. I think Giga's very, very good. The only thing that if I were to doubt would be his possible gas tank for five rounds. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you know, this fight's going to answer a lot of questions. But as it stands, uh, you know, I'm going with Giga. Uh, I think he's going to get a TKO in the fourth round. He might get like a liver shot, you know, uh, to ground and pound and get him like that. Or I don't know. Uh, that's the that's the way I see this fight going. I don't, I, I wouldn't say I'm wor- not, not worried about Cater, but not against Giga. For possible parlays, I think I only have the one that I, I don't want to say that I'm super confident in, but I would say I'm a good seventy five percent in. I've got to start off. I've got uh, Slava at minus two hundred. This is coming from my local, but yeah, it's my uh, local sports book. They have a website where you can build your your bets and whatnot. But they currently have it minus 200 for Slava. I'll take Chukagian at minus 180. And I'll take Brandon Royval at minus 170. So I got no dogs. Uh, but yeah, that gives me plus 267. So that's my parlay for this week that I'm more than likely going to go with. I might have one of those stupid ass parlays that I always go with for a couple bucks. But that's my base is Slava, Chukagian, and Royval. Yeah, it's funny. It's it's these sorts of cards where you can make a killing. You know, if you do get like uh, either uh, you know a pretty big parlay and just put down a few bucks, or if you put down you know like a three four you know team parlay and then it comes through and you put down like five hundred bucks. As it stands, this one is not worth betting. To be you know, in my honest opinion, uh, with the with the exception of Giga, and I think more often you know. Even though I did, you know, base my uh, pick in the uh, co-main based off my hate for Chukagian, uh, and you know, in reality, I do think she's probably going to get the decision. But you know, just as a as a pick, you know, I, I do hope Jennifer Maya gets the, you know, throws her weight around and uh, gets the uh, gets a submission. But as far as parlays, I have none for for this card. Those have been our picks and my possible parlays for UFC Fight Night Cater versus Chikadze. Once again, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, follow us on Twitter. 
uh, Instagram and the Discord if you want to chat with us outside of YouTube. But again, Johnny and Jose, Tiger Bomb MMA, and we'll catch you at the next fight.